having a spot of tea. Alrighty. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for stopping and joining us here. Um, all you Cody hackers and other hackers. Um, so in this video here, the hack is going to kind of be when is an outboard too far gone? When is an outboard at that point where you should just go, you know what? This thing's too salty, this thing's too rough, too many broken parts, and so forth like that. And so a prime example of that was gifted me here a couple weeks ago. And I showed it to you in the last video. It was that cute, cute, cutie 7.5. Pardon me, I said that wrong. 7.5 extra long shaft Suzuki. Now, just doing a once-over on that motor. She's rough. Real rough. You'll see here in the video. Um, is that one that I should just go, you know, that one is just too far gone. So I'm going to let you see it. Let you see some of the things I found. But one of the things that's hard to overcome on these older, older... Um, Suzuki's is this one is a points and condenser setup and I have played with in the past and will again only because I have them they're around here somewhere but um, they're basically the little electronic modules that I save them a lot of times off of uh, old lawn tractors and different things I work on. I find them on some of this equipment and I save them. And uh, back in the day they actually made in my opinion a better module. Um, and I have one set of these that I've just hung on to. Maybe you've, you've seen these before. Electronic engine tune-up module made in Australia. No longer made. I wish they were because they work better than the little little metal aluminum ones to me. Um, this And they came in different colors. I doubt you can read that but I thought I'd show you any. And it'll tell you the green module is for Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engines. The blue module, outdoor power equipment, lawnmowers, cultivators, etc. Brown, chainsaws. But anyway, these are the red ones, and it says right on there module 219 red fits two cylinder outboard motors using one module per cylinder. This is the last pack of these I have. And I've just been kind of hanging on to them for nostalgia reasons. They're cool. They work pretty good. Uh, the other ones work too. But these were called Atom Ignition modules. Made in Australia. Oh, excuse me. Atom Computer Ignition. So, there you go. And uh, I don't have one of the other, let's see, no, I don't have one of the other ones right handy to show you, but it's the same thing for the most part. They just take the place of the points and condenser. And, like I said, I have some around here, I'll have to dig out some of the newer ones. 
and I have used those on outboards before with okay results. I got fire back. So we're going to look at this Suzuki here and make a determination whether I should even try because that's what this vid I want to be about is at what point is a motor too salty, too broke, too just obsolete parts, those kind of things. Will this Suzuki fit into that category or not? You understand? That's what we gotta we gotta find out. So let's get to it. Got my flywheel puller hooked up. See if we can get this thing off here. She popped. Hard to say. Yep, I think she did. I'm 
has to happen because the bolts. Yes, it did pop. I watched it move up that time. Okay, what I did, I just put the puller back on with some thinner washers on the bolts. See if it will get it up a little higher. Yes. It lifted it up higher. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. You know, it's not as bad under there as I thought it would be. I thought that'd be a lot worse. That is weird, though. What's a weird setup? That's the dog system and all for the... Uh, pull start is incorporated with the flywheel. Interesting. And all that's froze up. Boy. Boy. But now let's look down in here. Mm. Well, there ain't no cleaning those points up. <laughs> There's solid rust. So, hopefully you can see right there. Right there's the contacts and they're just solid rust. Now here's the recoil. Um, I cleaned this up a little already. This is what it looked like when it came out. So I'll hit this and the little dog paws and everything on the wire wheel over here. That's what the dog paws look like. And then I hit them with the wire wheel, they look like that. That's what they look like coming out of there. So I'm going to get this all wire wheeled up and I'll be back. Alright, so I got this uh, recoil all cleaned up as best I could. I can do better on the top and the outside, but anyway, you can see the clutch dogs right here, here and here, there's three of them. They'll come out and grab. Now one thing that I noticed, and I don't know if it's just me, this is a size rope cord they had in there. And I went back with a lot smaller cord. I can hold it out and show. I mean, this, this thing is huge. This is only a 7 per 5. But anyway, that's what they had in there. It's huge. So I went with a small one. And the clutchy dog. Oop. And then I'll wire wheel that and maybe squirt a little paint on it. I'll be back. Top cylinder, halfway in between 1 and 150, 125. Bottom cylinder, probably about 130. Okay, here's the little Nova chips. I put one here, one here. And I put the ground wire behind it and just ran the self-tapping screw right into this aluminum cup here. Then I'll take my little 
Diablo Uno and cut the excess of this screw off and that would allow the flywheel to spin. It already has a hole right here there's a hole and so I run the wires up through there I'm gonna go up under the coil and then these chips come with a little wire nut I've already done this one I just left the condenser in there and I, I'm not sure if it's gonna work like this but this was this green wire was the one that was hooked to the points for the hot and so I don't know if it being integrated into the condenser will allow it to work but then they give you a little wire nut this guy here you twist the wires together and then put them out of the way then I'm gonna put it all back together and see if we got spark but that's how I'm gonna try it let me get set up I'll be back okay I put these chips in if you look at the tip of this spark plug right here I even got the light dim down so you can see it so we got good spark in that one that's the bottom move it out of the way bring the top in here hopefully you should be able to see it too turn it a little bit oh, it disappears in the hole then you can't see it spark on both top and bottom with those Nova chips that one mounted here and one mounted over here now whether it's enough spark I'm not sure about that but something about this engine something about it I'm just going to see if I can get a little pop. Oh no. Let me try some Stardust fluid. I can't really open the throttle wide open because it's stuck. Hmm. I don't know if that's going to work. I could spray it right into the leads, I guess. And keeps trying to jerk. I wonder if I got these backwards. Are they long enough to go? I think so. That felt better. That felt a little better. it keeps hanging up like that I don't know could it be in here could be okay. feel the flywheel there maybe yeah something ain't right not make right. Hmm. Something don't seem right. cables what's froze uh. 
but I can get into the throat now at least. Okay, that's backwards. That's got to be that popping like that. got an unboxing video for you. Want to see what it is? That's what it is. That's what it is. There they are. I thought it was supposed to come with like a, a cross member here, but this pair didn't. But these should make life a little easier around here, lifting all these outboards and whatnot. What do you think? I had an old junky homemade pair I made, but. These were priced pretty good, but yeah, I got to build some kind of cross thing. I thought they had something that went here, but it'll be easy to build it. Heck, I could just put a piece of plate with some holes in it and two pins would do. But there you go. That's going to help my back. Excuse me, Fred. Well, so the little seven Pert five Zuki. I put those Nova chips in there and I got spark on both cylinders. Never did stop, check, see if I could get points and condensers for it. And for, I did that for two reasons. One, if I could find points and condensers, I know they'd be probably over 70 bucks for the set. And I already had those little Nova chips. And you can buy them off the inner tube for $7 each. 
So 14 bucks got me spark on there. I don't know what it is. But when I was looking at the setup on this engine, there is no cam per se. Up under the flywheel is a mechanical bunch of stuff that opens and closes the points. There is a keyway, I'm guessing, to keep timing. I don't know if it's the flywheel keyway, things waddled out a little, little bit or something, but either the Nova chips are not providing enough spark or there's something going on with the timing. And it feels like a timing issue. The thing backfires and kind of locks up sometimes, kicks back and I switched the spark plugs around, the coil wires around, and made no difference. It does the same thing. So it seems like a, a timing issue. So, man, a lot of pulling on this little puppy. Um, off camera <clears throat> earlier, it was doing the same thing. I'd pull it and it, it, it'd pop and backfire. And uh, so I unhooked one of the little tabs on one of the uh, Nova chips. And then gave it a couple pulls and it fired off. Wow! And died. And with the, you know, the Stardust fluid I had in there. And, uh, I haven't been able to replicate that. But this little motor has a very complex points operating system, in my opinion, and something just seems bad with the timing. Then I found that little chunk of metal. I'm going to have to pull it all back apart again and find out where that little piece of metal came from. That could have been the original death of this motor, who knows. Um, I'm almost this close to pulling off the, the head just to look at them cylinders. Um, yeah. It's one of those things, you know, you just... How much time and effort do you want to spend on something like this? You know, and money. Um, throttle cables are roached. Hoses are roached. Points and condensers roached. I, I don't even know what's in that garbage raider yet. So, it's not looking good for this puppy here. It's this close. It did close to the bone heat. Because overall, if you look at the motor, it rough. Very rough. So, I'm going to play with it a little bit more because it's got me curious about these Nova chips. I've, I've been able to install these Nova chips on single cylinder motors without any problem. And they work. Chainsaws and stuff like that, they work. I've got a few other ideas, but the motors in that I could do... We've definitely got two types of coils under there, a DC charging coil and then the one that's sending the power to the plugs. Or it, <laughs> I mean, that one DC coil, charging coil, could be a dual-purpose thing where it does fire. There's four magnets up under the flywheel, so that makes me think. But anyway, um, I'll play with it probably a little bit more if I find out anything. Sometimes you just need to back away from them and think about things. I've got an old Suzuki manual around here somewhere that covers some of these older ones. I don't think it goes this far back though. So, um, and in my opinion, Suzuki, the older two strokes, they're known for their quirky um, elect electronics. The electrical in them is, is, is sometimes very odd. Um, so, I'm going to play with it a little more, look at it a little more. This one's probably getting a little bit long. So, 
That is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Upwards with your host.